Ecological Imperialism by Alfred Crosby. This is a follow-up to the Columbian Exchange. This is uh, We have a video of that one on this page already. Then the Columbian Exchange was written in 1972, and this is where... Um, Crosby introduced the thought process of what actually looking in totem of what was exchanged in the transatlantic voyage of the European coming to the Western Hemisphere. And um, that was where he really spoke of the diseases, the microorganisms, uh, all of the things that came, not just the people. He takes uh, ecological imperialism to another step. This is a 1986 publication. And it's still discussing the ecologies, uh, the microorganisms, the, the all of the things that were being brought over. But he packages those things to the most unique settlements that he described as neo-Europe's. Now we had some settlements that came that came over and were and there were many different types of settlements, but particularly in this book, he is focusing on the what actually he called a neo-Europe, which the North America would be a neo-Europe. Um Argentina uh, the 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 what we know as quote unquote Americanized. Uh, think about it. Language we speak, English. Our legal system is based on common law or uh, English law. So a lot of our you know the thirteen colonies were English colonies. So we weren't necessarily um, European. We were more. English, but a lot of the settlements that he's talking about were Spain, France, Portugal, and England. So that's why he's really making a very broad generalization. Now, is this law in the books exactly what it is? This is his theory, and it is important just for the theory to get the thinking to get to going. So it's not, yes, this is right, or no, this is wrong. It's Wow, what about that concept? Let's entertain it. Let's argue it. Um, his premise for a neo-Europe a neo is an almost complete transplant of European existence into a new host area. So in this case, the ecosystem, the Bugs, the plants, the animals, the diseases, the microorganisms, everything travels over with these groups of people from Europe. And because the ecology and the climates align, the plants germinate, the microorganisms germinate. To the extent that the original or the indigenous plants, microorganisms dissipate and the newly brought over or transferred European uh, items, plants, animals, uh, microorganisms become the indigenous reality of the area. They become the reality of that area. Whatever was there before is now gone. If it was a certain animal there, that animal is now gone and it's replaced with the European animal or no animals were there and now it's populated with these animals. Um, and some of these things were on purpose. Obviously, they brought cattle and they brought pigs and different things like that. But what they weren't thinking about were was... Uh, the feed that they had on their ships and the the liner, the hay, so to speak, that the animals slept in, when they came off of the ships, they actually spread those seeds into the ground 
And those plants began to come up and develop in this area. Um, rodents, you know, they put the animals that they needed on the boat, but obviously fleas, um, any insects associated with that animal. Um, rodents are going to be on the ships. So when they send stuff off the ship, everything's going to come off the ship. So now you got rodents, rabbits, uh, all forms of rodents, which I would imagine that's squirrels, that's rats, that's whatever. Now, certain insects carry certain diseases, not just the people. So now you have diseases the people have and then also diseases that the insects carry either from the animals or the people or from an animal at a place where these Europeans stopped to trade. So the European could have left Europe, stopped and picked some stuff up in Africa. Their mosquitoes on whatever they picked up, that's not necessarily indigenous to uh, Europe, but now it's part of that dynamic that they have around them because that's where they trade. So it had, does have a likelihood to be in Europe, even if that's not where it originated. And then all of this is being brought to this new host area. Now, if this does not happen, this is not a neo-Europe, just like they were um, like Brazil. They were colonized, but the Europeans couldn't take the heat down there. So they and they assume governmental control over the native people. So it still kept a native reality. Hence, this was a colony, but not a Neo-Europe. So there were some requirements for a Neo-Europe. Number one, the climates must align. They need to align because Europeans, for them to actually take over the area, it had to be a climate that they could take. And a lot of the South American climates and the Caribbean climates, they couldn't take. So which is why North America was so central in this particular book. Had to be scarcely populated. Um, now, scarcely populated didn't mean that the Europeans were respectful of other people's area. They wanted to scarcely populate it because they did not necessarily have the skill or resources to fight off everybody at this time. They couldn't penetrate Africa. They wanted to penetrate and colonize Africa and take all of the uh, riches that was in Africa because that was and still is the most richest continent in natural resources. But at that point in your pre, I'm going to say 18th century, um, the Europeans were not strong enough to penetrate the um, the African continent, and, and I believe also uh, the continents of, not continents, but uh, countries of China and those those uh, dynasties that were in place, they didn't have that kind of strength. So what they did was they picked on people that they could, and it wasn't always their skill that would de-densify. I just made up a word. The population, they, their diseases would kill tens of thousands of people. So they would then take the land um, that uh, it had to the ecologies must align as to where they were free from predators. Also, uh, number one, a predator being competition, anybody that could hurt the European that was as strong or stronger than the European. They didn't want that. Um, if um, it had to be tolerable for the European to to live there and parasites, if the parasites, if the ecologies were too different and the parasites kill the animals, wouldn't work. So you had to have climate must align, scarcely populated, remote from predators and intolerable to the Europeans. Now, the concept is, again, Plants, animals, insects, technology, cultures, diseases, microorganisms, all of these things that transferred over and takes over what was, gen what was there before, just like the Europeans. When the Europeans came over here, they killed off all of the Indians. 
and they began, they are the dominant culture there. Well, the plants, the, the, the terrains weren't used to animals walking on it and eating it. So once it was getting eaten and walked over, it wasn't tough enough to withstand that. So the plants that continued to grow were the plants that germinated from them coming over because those plants were strong enough and used to that type of activity. Those were the plants that took over. So just like the native, the native people were pushed out and replaced by the Europeans, as were the plants, as were the other um, animals and the ecologies, because you have to remember the, the animals it was always about money. So when they came over here, they repopulated these animals to sell back to England. So cattle, they're repopulating those. They're not repopulating the, the indigenous animals because that's not what the people in the old world wanted to eat. So all of these things are being completely replaced. Great book. Um, I was a big fan. Now, there, and, and there have been subsequent books that have challenged a lot of these theories. So it's not that this is a fact and this is how it goes, but it's a great book to challenge your historical thinking and broaden it. So if you get a chance, uh, Ecological Imperialism, Crosby, 1986.